now let's talk about uh, non conservation of energy so non conservation of energy is a situation where energy is not conserved okay so let's say we have um we have an object moving maybe from that point then we also have another one here so let's assume that this object will be moving from this point all the way to that point so it has to hit the ground then it goes up it goes there let's call this point to be point M let's call this point to be B and this to be C now whenever we're talking about non conservative conservation of energy friction is present at that point meaning that as the object is moving from point A all the way to point B there is a friction some of the energy some of the energy is going to be lost due to friction okay so the only difference which is going to be there between conservation of energy and non conservation of energy the formula is going to change conservation of energy we mentioned to say the mechanical energy initial has to be equal to the mechanical energy final this is the conservation of energy meaning energy is not lost it's not being lost energy is conserved so that's the reason why the initial energy you have that has to be the same as the final mechanical energy now if there is friction meaning that this initial initial uh, mechanical energy we need to say the mechanical energy final plus the work done due to friction okay the work done due to friction meaning that the energy which was being lost if we add it to final mechanical energy it's going to be the same as the mechanical energy initial or in some books they are going to tell you that mechanical energy initial minus the work done by the friction force has to be equal to the mechanical energy final which is just the same okay so that is non conservation of energy so let's assume to say uh, we have this object here and let's say h1 is 10 meters and h2 is 5 meters okay and let's assume that the the mu value let's not even put the mu value let's say that when it was at uh, at point a it started from rest okay it started from rest and then it reached at point what at point c and let's let's assume that the 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 length of the wire is 30 meters okay the question is how large is the friction force so how can we find the friction force in this case okay and let's assume that when it was reaching at point c the velocity at point c let's say the velocity at point c is 3 meters per second now the question is how large is the friction force to find how large is the friction force since it is a conservation of energy in short once you see that there is a friction that is conservation that, that is non conservation of energy so what you normally do you just like this formula mechanical energy initial has to be equal to mechanical energy final plus the work done by the friction or you can say mechanical mechanical energy initial minus the work done by the friction has to be equal to the mechanical energy final so you choose which one to go with so in this case I'll go with the first one so the first one is um, the mechanical energy initial has to be equal to the mechanical energy final plus the work done by the friction force our goal is to find how large the friction force is remember the mechanical energy initial we have the potential energy plus kinetic energy at initial plus this has to be equal to 
the final we are going to have potential energy final at point C you can even put point A and C that is just okay no one is going to penalize you I can even put here to same potential energy at point A plus kinetic energy at point A has to be equal to potential energy at point C plus kinetic energy at point C plus the work done by the friction which is going to be the force the friction force times the distance because work is force times distance now I can get rid of this because I just want to find how large the friction force is because I know the values okay so at point A before we even go there at point A do we expect to have kinetic energy yes it started from less so the kinetic energy is zero we don't expect to have kinetic energy at point B at point C do we expect to have potential energy yes because we have the H so this is the only thing which we are going to cancel so our formula now is going to be it's going to be the potential energy is going to be M G H 1 has to be equal to M G H 2 plus half M V um, at C squared plus F R D now we can see that we can shift this they should go to the left hand side so this is going to be mgh1 minus mgh2 minus half mv at c squared has to be equal to the force time distance we can divide everywhere by distance even here by distance so our friction force is going to be we have mgh1 minus mgh2 minus half mv c squared everything divided by d now from here we can plug in the values that's how we're going to find the friction force okay that is non conservation of energy so let's plug in the values but i can factor out here i can factor out mg we can say that the friction force will be equal to the m is the same g is the same so i can factor out mg h1 minus h2 minus half m v c squared divided by d let's see so our friction force in this case is going to be what is m okay let's say that the object which was moving okay the mass of this wire let's assume that the mass is um is 5 kgs so 5 times 9.8 h1 is 10 h2 is 5 minus half the mass is 5 times the velocity we said is 3 we square it everything divided by 30 so the friction force is going to be uh, inside oh here is 5 and not 10 this is supposed to be 5 because we say that h2 is 5 so we're going to have 5 10 minus 5 which is 5 so we have now uh, 5 times 9.8 then times 5 then again this is what we're going to have 240 45 minus so we have that is going to be 0 0.5 that is 1 over 2 times 5 then times 3 squared is 9 so it's going to be minus 5.0304 divided by 30 so this minus so 245 minus 0 0.5 then we divide it by 30 so the friction force how large is going to be is 4.66 newtons as simple as that okay so now let's see how we can solve some other questions on uh, the same uh, non-conservation of energy the question is saying a scar starts from rest at the top of the slope that makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal and slide 40 meters down the slope at the bottom the coefficient along the level snow uh, okay at the bottom 
she continues along the level snow as shown below so part a if the coefficient of kinetic friction between the skies and the snow is 0 0.15 and air friction is negated what is what is her speed at the foot of uh, the slope okay so if there is a they're saying that if there is um friction here okay there is friction so what would be the speed at the, this point that's the question okay what would be the speed at this point so let's call this point at point a this point as point b now let's see and then um let's call this one to be h as simple as that now we want to find the speed at this point there was friction meaning that it's non-conservation of energy the mechanical energy initial has to be equal to the mechanical energy uh, final plus the work done by the friction so mechanical energy initial it started from rest so we have potential energy at initial plus the kinetic energy initial has to be equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final plus the, the work done by the friction force which is force time distance okay now we don't expect to have kinetic kinetic energy at point a so we, we cancel this also we cancel potential energy final we don't expect to have it so potential energy initial is going to be equal to kinetic energy final okay plus the work done by the friction force so this is going to be m g h is going to be equal to half m v squared plus work is friction force times distance the distance we have which is 40 okay since we have um that one we know that is going to be okay so we're going to have um m g h is going to be half m v squared plus the friction force is mu times the normal force times g but remember just remember one thing this object is on an incline remember that the, the fn on an incline is mg cos theta so i have to replace that one with mg cos theta so i'm going to say that at the same time this h i can replace it with what using sokatoa is going to be my h is going to be the 40 which i have here sin theta okay because i don't have h so i can say that if i want i can find in advance if i want i can just plug in the values so i'm going to have okay i'm going to have um m g where there is h i'm going to put 40 sine 30 has to be equal to half m v squared plus mu this is going to be mg cos theta times d we can see that we don't have mass and mass is, is appearing everywhere we can cancel the mass and we are going to remain with g 40 sin 30 has to be equal to half v squared our goal is to find the v plus mu g cos theta times d let's see now what we can do now from here we can see that this is what we're going to do we can uh, shift this to the other side we can see that we're going to have g 40 sine 30 minus mu g cos theta times d this has to be equal to half v squared so we can do times 2 everywhere to get rid of half and we're going to see that you are going to have two open brackets i can even factor g so i'm, I'm going to have this i'm going to have this now i can get the square root of both sides and i'm going to have v will be equal to the square root of 2g 40 sine 30 minus mu 
cos theta times d let's see so my velocity down there is going to be 2 times 9.8 this is going to be 40 sine 30 is, the, is, 20, is 15 minus then you have um, new value have we been given the new value yes it's 0 0.15 so 0 0.15 0 0.15 uh, cos 30 then again the answer I find times the distance which is 40 so it's giving me 5.15 5 5.1 5.2 5.20 okay so let's see what we're going to do so we have 2 times 9.8 is 19.6 19 19.6 .6 open brackets then I have 15 minus uh, 5.2 so I'm getting my velocity okay so I have to get the square root of this now which is 13.85 so my velocity is 13.86 meters per second so the velocity at this point it was it was 13.86 meters per second that is non-conservation of energy now how far away from the floor of the slope does does she come to, to stop so this is going to be at this point so meaning that the initial velocity the final velocity at this point is going to be zero the initial now is going to be the 13.86 the distance now is the one that they're asking us okay so now what method can we use remember there is friction at this point okay we want to find how far so now we are, we are saying that the velocity at that point is going to be 13.86 we can find first acceleration so we can say that the summation of the forces in x direction the only force which is acting there is the friction force okay we expect our acceleration to be negative because it is decelerating so mass times acceleration the work done or the this uh, friction force is opposing the motion is going to be negative so negative mu times the normal force which is mg okay we can cancel the mass so acceleration will be equal to negative mu g acceleration will be negative 0 0.15 times 9.8 so acceleration is going to be 0 0.15 times 9.8 which is 1 point negative 1.457 meters per second squared that is my acceleration using the third equation I can find how far it was I can say 2a d so the final is 0 okay the initial is 13.86 squared plus 2 acceleration is negative 1.47 times d we shift this to the other side you can see that we're going to have this it's going to be negative negative 2.8 94 times d let's divide it both side by 2.94 even here by negative 2.94 so our d will be equal to negative and negative will cancel so i'm getting 65.34 so meters as our distance so how far it was that is going to be 65.34 meters as simple as that